Okay. <laughs> so, hi everyone. I'm Federico Ardiconi, a second year physics student in Rome, La Sapienza, working in the Experimental Cosmology Group. Today, I'll present you first result analyzing Atacama Cosmology Telescope data of a galaxy cluster pair able 39401, looking for filamentary structure between the two galaxy cluster pair. So, uh, let's start with the problem. It is known that uh, about half of the baryon in the local universe cannot directly seen as galaxy cluster, cl uh, galaxies, dust, stars, and uh, so on, because these variants have been uh, proposed to, to reside outside galaxy clusters, in particular in the outskirts of the clusters and along filament connecting them in the, into the so-called cosmic web. In particular, these, um, these variants must be in the form of hot plasma in a very low density phase. So they are very difficult to be observed, for example, with them X-ray emission because X-ray luminosity depends on the square of the electron uh, density. So being these variants in a very low density phase, their X-ray emission is very faint and so it's very difficult to detect their imprints. And also their radio synchrotron emission is very faint because the number of relativistic electrons in filamentary structure are, are expected to be very low. And also magnetic fields in these filaments are uh, very, very weak. So also synchrotron emission is very faint. Fortunately, there is another opportunity to see the imprint of these barriers that is the sunyavia zeldovich effect. And fortunately, it depends only linearly from uh, by the electron density. So if we have a low density, it's more easier to observe this effect between CMB photons and hot electron uh, in uh, intercluster medium with respect to, um, to X-ray emission. So what we are looking for is a couple, uh, a pair of galaxy cluster at low redshift that can be observed with instrument like the Atacama Cosmology Telescope reaching a resolution of uh, some arc minutes. In particular, uh, the system composed by Able 309 and 401 is the perfect uh, science case for uh, our situation because it's a low redshift cluster pairs. And in the last year uh, in the system have been observed an excess of emission between the two galaxy cluster. For example, here on the right, you can see a LOFAR image at 140 megahertz with 80 R second angular resolution. And you can see that after masking the two cluster here 401 and on the bottom uh, right uh, 399, there remain an excess of emission moving towards the axis connecting the two cluster, as you can see here in this plot. And they were able also to extract the density and uh, an upper limit for the magnetic field in this region between the two clusters. And also the Planck collaboration studied this system. And uh, after subtracting the two cluster from the Compton Y map that has a resolution around seven arc minutes, they found uh, an excess of emission between the two clusters at a level of two, three sigma within uh, this region that unfortunately it's only two, three beam of uh, Planck. So, we would like to study again this system, but with an instrument which has an angular resolution uh, much better than the Planck one. And for this, we use uh, Atacama Cosmology Telescope uh, data that uh, can reach an angular resolution of the order one, two arc minutes at three different uh, frequency bands that are 98, 150, and 200 gigahertz. Uh, and being this instrument uh, on the Atacama Cosmol, uh, the Atacama Desert, um, it's able to reach also sensitivity to improve Planck sensitivity to uh, produce maps that can be used to study, for example, our system very in details. So this is the map that have been produced with uh, the Takama Cosmology Telescope. Essentially, this map is based on the fifth uh, data release uh, by ACT. But we added to this map also the 2019 data that are not included in the fifth data release, uh, following the method explained in this uh, paper. 
This map is characterized by one Archimedes point 65 angular resolution. And uh, here, for example, in the center, you can see the two galaxy clusters, 401 and 399, and some green contour levels at a, le at a level of 357 and so on sigma. And you can see that also here, there is uh, some emission, some signal between the two clusters at a level between three and five sigma of the, of the map that characterize the map. The region that here I highlighted with the dashed blue region is the one that we will fit in the, as I show you in the next slide, while the external eight feet have been used with exception of this one in red, because there are, there is some contamination by dust to extract the correlation between pixel and so to build uh, the covariance matrix that we will be used to estimate the covariance, um, the likelihood during the fitting process. And then on the bottom left of the map, you can see the comparison between the 1.65 arc minus resolution of, of fact and the resolution of Planck that is of the order of seven arc minutes. And here I show you a zoom in of the previous image where um, on the dash blue region. And this is the map that we use to fit the two galaxy cluster and the signal between uh, them. We overplotted also the R500 of the two cluster that have been measured fitting the, um, the two cluster as I show you in uh, some slide. So what we did is to start from the previous map and fit four different models to take into account also the emission from the two clusters and also the signal between uh, them. We uh, run four MCMC algorithms based, um, based on a, a Python implementation MCA. Uh, here you can see the reference for this um, implementation of the MCMC algorithm. And to fit the galaxy cluster, we use uh, uh, two generalization, generalization of the lip of the beta profile, the circular one, the spherical, that is described by this equation. And uh, then we introduce also a term of asphericity, simple replacing this ratio between the generical distance and the core radius of the cluster using this equation where we introduce the ratio between the minor and the major axis of the, of the cluster. And then for two of the four model, we fit it also to reproduce the, the signal between the two cluster, this model that we call MESA model, because we would like to reproduce the flatness that we can observe in this region between the two galaxy clusters. So we fitted this MESA model with the condition to stay here somewhere between the two clusters. And as you can see, there are no um, physical a priori meaning for this formula, but it's simple. Uh, an equation that is able to reproduce the flatness of the, of the signal between the, the two clusters to reproduce sharp edges and without using a lot of free parameters that make the fit slowly convergence. So to, to be sure, the four models are two elliptical beta models fitting only the two cluster, three elliptical beta models for, for the two clusters and the signal between them, and then two circular beta profile plus the mesa between them and two elliptical plus the mesa between them. We run the model, uh, the fit until the convergence. Here we sh I show you um, the best fit parameter for the for fit. And on the right, there is a subsample of the posterior distribution for what we think is our best fit. So elliptical, two elliptical beta model plus the mesa between them. And you can see, for example, the expected degeneration between the beta and the core radius of the two cluster and the amplitude of the filament. So we have around a seven sigma detection. And then on the left, there is also the 1D slice passing through the center of the two galaxy clusters that here you can see the MESA model with the typical flatness. And then on the bottom, the residual. And as you can see, most of the points are zero compatible within one sigma that is indicated here with the gray area. Here I show you some residual for three of the four models. So the two elliptical beta profile and 
without fitting anything between the two galaxy clusters, you can see that there is some excess of signal that has not been fitted. Then the two elliptical beta profile plus the mesonine, you can see that here the signal is compatible what, with what we have outside. So it's essentially the noise. In fact, in fact the red ask square is one. And then we have three elliptical beta profile. So we derived from our best fit the mass of the mesa, the mass of the two cluster. We found that the mass of the mesa is around 8% of the total system. Then we derived the, the size of the mesa on the plane of the sky, and it's 2.3 by 1.9 megaparts, where 2.3 is along the line connecting the two clusters and 1.9 along the transversal line. And then combining the amplitude of the mesa at its center with X-ray measurement, we were able to measure the thickness of the mesa along the line of sight that we find this 12 megaparsec that is much bigger than the dimension of the mesa on the plane of sky. So this means that most of the system lies along the uh, line of sight and not on the plane of the sky as it was assumed in a previous study. So we built this simple toy model, assuming that uh, in the reference frame of the two clusters, the true thickness of the filament is equal to the uh, width of the mesa on the plane of the sky. And we were able to measure the uh, angle between the line of sight and the axis connecting the two clusters that was found to be 70 degrees. So using the total separation of the cluster on the plane of the sky, that is 3.2 megaparsec, we were able to extract the total separation, the physical separation between the two clusters that was found to be around 11 megaparsec, so much larger than the two radii of the two clusters. So only with the cluster, we are not able to explain the signal that we have between them. So we need something else that can be a the filament we expect to, to have found. So to conclude, this study will be soon be publicly available on the archive we have submitted and will be also submitted. And then we have other ARC data that are unprocessed for the moment that we plan to use to look for shock in the region. And we have also Mustang 2 data that we would like to combine with ACT to, to look for shock with high uh, angular resolution.